I was in a booth by myself, first day in Laguna Beach, and I heard this woman telling her friend about all that she had done to help her uh, alcoholic husband. She'd called in work once again to say he was sick. She had gotten a ticket herself uh, because when he got pulled over, they switched drivers and she took uh, the ticket. All these different enabling codependent things she was explaining. And I just turned around and I said, would you mind if I talk to you about you and your husband? I couldn't help but overhear. She said, no, sure, fine. And this young guy said, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you're killing your husband. <laughs> That's what I said. I mean, I, I just said it. You're killing your husband to a stranger. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Welcome to Going Deeper. Steve Arterburn here, and we're at the end of the end of the alphabet, and we're here at the letter Z. Now, I don't want to disappoint all of you ornithologists or ornithophiles. We're not going to talk about zygodactyl uh, talons on the owl. You know, that's toes pointing forward and back which when you think about it, it's not a bad subject to talk about because a lot of people don't know whether they're going or coming. We're, we're going to go a certain direction here. And here's the direction we're going with this letter Z. It's in the direction of zeal. Now, most people are familiar with the term zealot, and that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about real zeal, a biblical zeal. A zealot is somebody, it's like they have the commitment and the dedication to a religious cause or principle, no compassion and no people, no personhood behind it. And that's not what we're going for here. What we're talking about is zeal. And it's an enthusiasm. Uh, it's being energized by this amazing uh, life of faith, this relationship with Christ, this belief, and this power that we experience. All of that goes into this person who has zeal in their faith. Now, we see a lot of people with zeal for sports teams, and they dress up to show that they have this great love and zeal, and they're energized on game day. It just happens to be the same day we worship Jesus. Uh, but they go all out with this zeal for the sports team. And, you know, you've heard the old story. You very seldom... Uh, hear people say, you know, I'm just not going to go to the stadium anymore because there are people there that actually don't really fully have a commitment to this team or something like that, you know. So, um, but zeal, zeal. We see it all the time. It's wonderful. Mother Teresa had zeal for people. Great compassion and love. And, and she got up in the morning wanted to help people even in their worst moments coming to death. Uh, in Calcutta. Martin Luther King Jr. had great zeal for uh, racial justice, and he wanted that to happen. And in fact, he did this wonderful uh, work on redirecting the, the thing that he called missionary zeal. He said, hey, let's quit uh, all of our focus on international stuff, and let's come back home, and let's do some work right here so that we all end up being treated, well, as he said, based on the quality of the character inside of us, not the superficial color of skin. So he had great zeal and did great things for that particular cause. But look at Romans 12, 11. Paul writes this, never be lacking in zeal. He says, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. And so we got to ask ourselves, do we have zeal in serving the Lord? Now, I have a strange zeal. I love hurting people. Now, what I really mean by that is I have a love for helping people who are hurting. This came upon me 
uh, in the last year of my senior year in college, and I am just as excited about working with people that need a bit of help and seeing what can happen. I've been a little zealous, you could say, sometimes. The first day that I was in Laguna Beach, California, back in 1980, I went to a breakfast at a downtown restaurant called the Jolly Roger. I was in a booth by myself, first day in Laguna Beach, and I heard this woman telling her friend about all that she had done to help her uh, alcoholic husband. She'd called in work once again to say he was sick. She had gotten a ticket herself uh, because when he got pulled over, they switched drivers and she took uh, the ticket. All these different enabling codependent things she was explaining. And I just turned around and I said, would you mind if I talk to you about you and your husband? I couldn't help but overhear. She said, no, sure, fine. And this young guy said, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you're killing your husband. <laughs> That's what I said. I mean, I, I just said it. You're killing your husband to a stranger. I said, I've just moved here to work at an alcohol and drug treatment program. It's the same program Betty Ford went through. And if you would let me help you, you'd help your husband not help him die on this path you're on. She said, okay. And that began a dialogue that resulted in him getting treatment and him getting sober. And she didn't kill the man, she saved his life. So I was a little bit overboard in, in interrupting. I wouldn't do that today. But sometimes, you know, uh, I, I want to just intervene with strangers because I love seeing people Get better. It's the part of the Christian faith that I've focused on all my life, wanting to help hurting people. Because I was hurting so badly, and I hurt people so badly, that I wanted to see people take God's truth, infuse it into their life that would result in um, redemptive relationship. Where no one that they live with or work with would ever say, I'm hating you right now, or please help me not hate you so much right now. What a horrible thing. You know, if, if somebody's saying to you, because you've said something, I'm trying not to hate you right now, there's a good chance you've lost the compassion that goes with zeal and you need to take the time to repair that relationship. Or they're just mean people and, and they need to do some work on their own attitude. Anyway, when we have zeal, we're not boring and it's contagious. Other people see our excitement, see that we are energized by a certain cause or movement or Christ himself or the power of the Holy Spirit, and they want to be a part of it because we are very unboring. Now, what can steal our zeal? Well, first, working alongside some, someone that, that would say, you know, I, I resent you or I'm trying not to hate you or something when you're really just a wonderful human being. That could steal it from you. Or if you're always comparing yourself to other people and you come up short. Or if you're working with people that or you're living with people that compare you. That can really destroy. Why can't you be more like? That kind of thing. Or if you're worried about things that you simply can't control. Or maybe your schedule is so busy that there's no balance in your life and there's no room for real redemptive relationship. All of that can be part of something that's very, very destructive and removes the, the zeal from our life. Titus 2.14, this is Paul writing to Titus. It says this, Jesus gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. It's just a profound scripture. He purified us for himself. He wanted to own us lock, stock, and barrel 
so that we could live with him and be with him for all eternity. Now, that's something to get excited about. That is zeal. When Jesus had so much zeal and love for us that he gave his life for us, oh my goodness, uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Okay, so let's say that you're one of these people that somebody says to you, what are you really passionate about? And you might say ice cream or something like that. But or it's hard for you to kind of say, well, there's not really a passion in my life. How do we get there so that one day we might have this enthusiastic zeal for something? Well, you might start, what is it that I do really well? Maybe if I focused a little time on what I do well, there might be something that would emerge from that where I could use that to help an organization or some other people or develop a book about it or a workbook or whatever. Second thing is, I might ask myself, what do I love doing? Yeah, sure, video games, uh, things like that, but is there something I really love doing that once I'm doing it, oh, it just kind of uh, engulfs me and, and I just am so fulfilled by it. And then that's the third thing. What is fulfilling and meaningful? So what do I do well or love or what is it that provides meaning? and purpose because you might have those things but you just don't do them you don't take the time to do them so do them do the things you do well do the things you love to do do the things that bring you a feeling of meaning and purpose and just watch what happens when all of a sudden you become somebody that used to do these things to somebody that's doing them and has a zeal for doing them because they are not just rewarding and enriching your life, but they're enriching somebody else's too. Z, it stands for zeal. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.